Hello, and welcome to the first installment of Fox Paints. What I'm going to be doing for you guys today is Bob Ross's Mount McKinley painting. I'm going to do things a little bit differently than he does in the video, like I'm starting with a completely dry canvas, and I'm going to try and walk you through what I'm thinking as I do this painting. I hope you enjoy. As you can see, I've got my two inch hog's hair brush. And since this is a completely dry canvas and we're doing a wet on wet style, I'm going to grab titanium white, pure titanium white, not liquid white, and I'm just going to add it to my canvas. I'm going to try and do a very nice, even coat. And I just wanted to, to point out that you don't need liquid white to do this style. So I'm out of titanium white, but I think that I need to stretch this even thinner. Pushing very hard and pulling that down. Now I'll do vertical strokes. Pulling it down. All right, for the next part of this painting, I'm gonna grab a little Prussian blue on a one inch brush, tap it into the bristles, and a little bit of phthalo green. And you know what, I'm feeling feisty, I'll grab a little black too. A little more Prussian blue, mixing onto my palette. Get some into the fibers. Get some good coverage on that paintbrush. And now I'm just gonna do little swirls, putting color across the canvas, little swirls. paying too close attention to where the paint is going. I just want it to feel airy. Be very light and be very heavy, be very heavy, be very heavy, be very light. Do whatever you want. Just make it look a little bit diverse. So now I'm going to swirl it up at the bottoms very lightly at the bottom so these this uh we're just adding blue but we're going to try and give it a feeling of clouds even though we're only adding our blue background i want this to go about halfway down the canvas set this brush aside and go back to my two inch that still has the white titanium white on it. I'm going to go from the bottom up straight across in horizontal strokes. Now from the top down. Maybe add a little bit of swirls. Try and get a little bit of that paint to have different value. X's because why not? And there we have the blue background that Bob starts with. But he also added blue, Prussian blue, a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of black for water. He's going to have water in his painting. I might as well have it in mine. Make sure that we get good coverage. If you missed any spot with your titanium white earlier, this is a good time to put it in. Bring that water straight up to the top. Grab that color again to the other side, from the outside in. And automatically, thanks to the titanium white, it'll get lighter in value. I'm gonna go back to my two inch brush. Still haven't washed them off and just straight across. And if you get blue streaks in your water that you don't really like, you can do little X's lightly. 
and it kind of takes those away a little bit. Just working from the bottom up and then over. Now for me, I like it when my light is coming down from this angle. Ooh, how am I going to fix that? Make it a little bit darker. You'll never know. So I want a sheen of light to come down from that angle too. It's alright, I plan on making it darker anyway. Got to find the joy of painting. If you ever feel really committed to something, you're doing it wrong. Got to be able to be flexible and move. All right, so we have the light, light ray coming down the water at an angle. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to wash my brushes, and then we'll get to those clouds. A little bit right there. Doesn't matter. Now that I've cleaned my brushes and I have a little bit more titanium white on my palette, I'm going to start doing these big puffy clouds to go over this nice blue and white background. So I'm going to start by pulling out a little bit of titanium white out of my brush, tapping it into the bristles. This is a lot of paint, you'll see. Uh, touch, just a touch of bright red. And now we have a nice pink tone. That's a very light pink. I want a little bit more, just a touch. I'm going to do different levels of pink, starting with the darkest. So you'll see that that's why I'm separating it. So I've got dark, pink, light pink, and then white. That's how I'm going to apply these clouds. Fabulous. Starting, I think, in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to find a spot that looks like a cloud might live. We're not following Bob Ross's video too closely. We're trying to do our own thing. That's the spirit of Bob Ross, I think. So when you do yours, don't get hung up in it. I'm doing a portrait of a landscape painting. Like he did it landscape, I'm doing a portrait. So now that I've got my paint on my brush, find a spot that a cloud might live, like right here, kind of do taps, kind of do swirls. This is very, very light, barely grazing the canvas in some places, tapping it. Get my dark pink again. I think the cloud goes like that. And then we have one on this side. I'm finding where the white meets the blue, and I'm just making a cloud into it, or making it into a cloud. Maybe some more over here. We're not going to do that for all of them. Not that we don't have time or anything, because I'm doing this and no one's really going to watch it anyway. I just like to have different levels. Some cloud stuff going on over here. And as I'm going down, I'm getting a little bit of blue and a little bit of white into my pink. And that's okay because the color is going to change slightly as you move down in elevation. A little bit of white here. Pink. A little bit going over there, a little over here. And down that way. So. I'm going to wipe off all my palette, just straight onto my palette, a little bit of that paint, and I'm going to get it off on my drop cloth, you can just paper towel, whatever you want. I'm going to lightly swirl the bottoms of this pink, not the tops. You could swirl it all if you really wanted, but I'm just doing the bottoms. I want to give it a very nice airy feel to it, which is why I'm using my natural hair, natural bristled brush. Mm -hmm. 
one thing to be aware of when you do these paintings is the rule of thirds. There should be something going on here, 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 and here. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. You need those are points of interest. So I'm going to try and have clouds or mountain peaks go in there. I'm doing Bob, Bob's McKinley painting, but it's not going to look like McKinley at all when I'm done. And I know that, and I'm going to accept it, walking right on into that. I've got my pink. I did that all with a one inch brush. And I'm going to take a two inch brush, and I'm going to fluff them up. I'm pushing kind of hard with this. My brush is bending some pulling it up, that, that's what I consider hard, by the way. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. So if you're wondering why it's not working for you, maybe you're putting too much pressure on it, maybe your version of hard is different from mine. And then I'm going to go straight across horizontally. It gives a little added dimension that the just regular white didn't have. But now the pink doesn't quite look right. So I have my lighter pink that I'm going to put right below it. Not all of them. You don't have to do all of them. Just anywhere that stands out is too pink. You'll be able to tell. Do it to your taste. I'm not even going to bother really swirling this. I'm just going to little X's near the bottom. Getting impatient. I want to get to the mountains. Everybody has problems with mountains, and I don't know why. It's not hard to do. Find a spot that's too warm, got too much pink in it, tap it like I just did. Right there, tap it, then up and over. Maybe here. And for our last layer, we're going to add some pure white. To do that, I'm going to wash my brush off, no to the paint thinner. Log it off a little, get the devil out of it. Log it off some more, nice and dry. Now pure titanium white. Not touching the bottoms where the pink was. This is going to gradually make them brighter as it goes down and it helps blend them into the sky. Can't do too much detail now. It's all representative anyway. Clouds don't look like this. Get that paint off just by wiping it onto a drop cloth or a paper towel. And I'm not going to swirl this at all. Up. Make it easier, I'll do my two-inch brush. Up. doing this to blend them together, my layers together. I don't like having them be very distinct from one another. You can do what you think works though. I'm sure you will anyway. Now straight over from the bottom up. And that's how I would do this cloudy background that he has in his Mount McKinley painting. And we're back. To start these mountains, I'm going to grab my palette knife. A little bit of Prussian blue, put it into the center. A little bit of black, put it into the center. A little bit of red, put it into the center. A little bit of brown, put it into the center. And now, scrape it off, flip it. Scrape it off, got myself a brush hair. A 
I think this needs a little bit more blue. It's coming out really red. Maybe a little bit more black. We're going to want this color later, so we're going to make sure that we have a lot of it. This will be our generic shadow color for the rest of the painting. If you're curious what the color is, take it with a little bit with your finger. A little white. Just That's purple. I kind of like that. It's like a mauve. Wipe my knife off on my drop cloths. I'm going to pull my paint out, my paint out really flat. Wipe it off. Now what bothers me about Bob Ross's version of this painting is that it doesn't really look like Mount McKinley. So I looked up a picture of Mount McKinley with the light coming from this direction. And I'm going to go with that as my reference instead. And I'm going to do it however I want it. So for me, I think Mount McKinley comes here. A little peak around, uh, I'd say, center-ish. A little bit around. thing that's important with this mountain is to get that firm edge where you want it. Hmm. That is kind of straight over. I think that's straight over. Doesn't matter. It's a mountain however I want it to be. I'm going to make it actually go down like that. A little bit higher. Can't take the black-ish color off once you've already put it on. So you're committed. It's a fantasy mountain. Accept it. It will never be perfect. I'm feeling like this mountain's a little uneven. Make it a little bit shallower there. Spreading it out, making it wider. This is why you can, one of the great things about this style of painting, you can do it, compose as you go. Next step, I'm going to take my very dark color that I said I would use later, scrape it off, stick it in one big pile, off to the side. Oh, stick it in one big pile off to the side. Wipe off my knife. And I'm going to grab my paint right at the edge and just pull it down. You see, I'm scraping it off too. hear me scraping, I'm pushing very hard. Okay, got most of the paint off my knife, I'm going to wipe it clean. Sit back down now. 
My one inch brush, it's as easy as with a small brush. Get it up right here, pushing hard, and then drag. If you have a hair sticking out, you can just grab it. You still want to preserve that nice dark edge. You're actually trying to grab a little bit of that paint with it. the brush you can move your edge a little bit give it more natural feel so you don't have straight lines it's another thing people do all the time they have these straight lines mountains they aren't perfectly straight they have a lot of live life to them so for example here I got my finger behind the canvas I'm just gonna push that edge out a little bit give it a little bit of flavor. This is a speed painting technique, but that doesn't mean it has to be bad. So I've got it pulled down mostly, so I'm going to start at the top and go over very gently some of the spaces and I'm going to blend this down to the white. Mount McKinley is a tall mountain. I like this mauve lavender color. I don't know what you call it. Mountains are more distinct at the top than they are at the bottom. We keep that hard edge and we let this blend down right into that white. And if you really felt like it, you could grab some more white, like I am right now, and do little X's to blend it up into the mountain. Canvas will keep what it needs and give back what it doesn't. Another chance for you to stand out from other people is to make a little bit of a light blue and then use that as your highlight color until you finish your highlights and then do another pure white highlight just to give a little shine in some places and it makes it extra pretty. So let's begin. My reference here says that there is a ridge that comes down. Right around here. I'm just going to use my knife give me a rough outline and then later I'll pull it down and do the traditional Bob Ross paint for snow. This will help me lay it out. this is all highlight. So I'm going to have a little bit of shadow here, a highlight on that side, highlight on that side. Then highlight the shadows, a little bit of highlight there, a little bit of highlight there. Wipe off my knife. Let's get started. I'll grab my smaller knife and make it a little easier. Little roll of paint. Find a nice spot, like right there. And just with the weight of the knife, nothing more than the weight of the knife, drag it down. See, as you get further down, it starts to mix with the color underneath, and that's okay.
If you have trouble with this, hold your knife, two fingers, maybe three fingers, as far down as you can. It should break way easier. So I'm letting that blue mix in, and I'm going to go over the areas that have blue with white again, and it'll make it look a little bit more lively. There's a little bit right there. Triangle over here. I don't know how much of this will stay around later. Doesn't matter. to that hard edge and lightly pull down. Now from a shadow color, start with Prussian blue, a little bit of green, you know let's go straight into this little mauve too, let that be our shadow color. little white in there. Let it marble and opposite direction. change. Take my one inch brush. Got my one inch brush. It took a long time to get this mountain, and I, I think I like the way that it turned out. So, one inch brush from that white area in the angles that we want the paint to go. We're adding a little layer of mist, diffusing it some. Helps give a sense, oh no, oh no, I hit my, I hit my snow. Oh, how am I going to fix that? No one will ever know. No one's going to watch this anyway. No, no one will know. <laughs> uh. You 
you've got Bob Ross, a bunch of other people who are doing channels doing just like this. My paintings aren't special. Only to me. Pull it up. I'm taking paint off too. Always taking paint off. Next up is foothills, which are like a brownish color. So I have Van Dyke Brown. I'm just going to use straight Van Dyke Brown. They seem to go starting like right here. Put a link to the image in the video. finish off these foothills. I've got my one inch brush again grabbing the little edge and pulling it down giving myself a smooth surface to work on. Just like that. For our shadows, I'll grab this dark color again, mix it with a little more Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to do the shadows first because I can. It doesn't matter. It's on my knife at the very moment. Maybe a shadow is going to come down that way. Maybe a shadow is going to come down that way. doesn't. No biggie. Never is. Never is a problem. Most of this is going to get covered up with other stuff anyway. Highlight isn't going to be snow. It's going to be a light brown. You couldn't find a picture of Mount McKinley that had snow everywhere.
And doing little things like this really helps you learn how to use the knife. feel I don't I don't care if it's Papa Ross. I keep saying that but you can speed painting and I don't think it's a too high risk. mountains touch and become other other parts of the mountain so this is going to be the same place now too and this one is behind both This one is going to be bigger than all of them. It's going to go right along there. So I'll carve out some of the paint that I don't need anymore. Because I'm composing this as it goes. changing as it moves but automatically because I don't want to get more out of tubes. This is one of those ways that you guys who are cheap bastards like myself to get the most out of your paint. around now. Grab this light and pull a little bit more white and pull. And pull.
missed a spot. I'm trying to cover all that blue up. I think that's a pretty cool mountain. It doesn't look exactly like Mount McKinley, never will, but for something that's coming out of basically my head, I'm cool with it. And this dark shadow color that I mixed a lot of earlier, that I made the mountain out of, I'm going to grab some sap greens, big pile of sap green, and toss that in the mix too. What I'm looking for now is a dark color that I'm going to make trees and bushes and shit out of. And I want to be able to see the green very slightly. Yep, I can see it. I don't know if it'll show up on film, but it's definitely there. So when I add highlights, it'll highlight to a slight green tone. I'm going to tap my palette until I have what looks to be... Hmm, the kind of leaves that I want has got to be like a, a very fluffy whip look. Lots of paint on my brush. Tapping it in the bristles. And I want to put these here. You can see the, the canvas ripple. That's how hard you have to push if you want to get this deep into the canvas. And then lightly, I'm going to reflect it, so I'm lightly going to put some down at the bottom. It's a lot of paint in my one inch brush. Imagination go. See, I think I'm like no farther than that. Three fifths of the canvas are covered. I want to be symmetrical. Hmm. Stepping aside for a moment, and grabbing my two inch brush where I want the water line. Brush in, pull down. Brush in, pull down. Brush in, pull down. Very gentle. Very gentle. Brush it onto something to get rid of that color. Just go straight over. Straight over. Again and again. And that'll be my shadows. You can see now there's a little bit of a touch of green in there. That'll be nice later. I don't want to lose all the paint in here, so wiping it off on my palette. Maybe a piece of paper towel too. I don't want to wash it, I want to get this green color into my yellow and it'll brighten it up. There we go. Brightens it into a nice green. Maybe a touch paint thinner. Make it stick. Very light touch. Reflect it down. Maybe a little yellow ochre next in there. These are very far off distant trees and shit. Maybe a little red too on this side. Autumn colors. I don't think Alaska really has these colors. I don't care. I'll grab some straight sap green. Tap it in down there. Pop it in. Maybe a little white too. Since it's 
looking very sap greeny, more white. Ooh, very pretty. I need to work on that reflection with the yellow ochre down this way. We're not going to really concern ourselves with mirror reflections right away. But it's nice to have a little bit of it. with the other corner of the brush. Maybe some more sap green. I think this is why I have a little bit of a muddy color feel to my paintings, because I don't really wash it off. When I do bushes like this, I don't alternate brushes, I just go with it. That's just my style. You can do it however you want it. So as we've established before, I don't give a shit. Set that brush aside again. Two inch clean dry brush. Like a kitten's fart. solid mirrored reflections. So next Bob Ross puts a buttload of pine trees in here. So I'm gonna do the same. Grab my fan brush, a lot of what <laughs> a lot of paint thinner on it. Whole lot of paint thinner on it. It's not really a, a watery paint, but it's getting there. And this will make sure that it sticks on top of all this shit we put there. <laughs> 